So I'll rewind. We met at UT and this dude was like a child prodigy, <laughs> you know, like um, he was so, he was so smart, but one of the very impressive things about him was that he was, he was young. He was 15 when he started at UT and, you know, everyone was just like, whoa, but he was, he was a very mature, even at that age, he was very mature, very intelligent. Um, I think you were president of some of, you know, one of the organizations that we were both in. Um, I don't even know what you majored in, man. What were you, what was your major? Chemical engineering. Okay. Wow. And, um, we were both in the African student association, uh, both Nigerian, yep. but you were coming straight from Nigeria here. Why don't you, why don't we talk about that a little bit and just like, because to me, that's still, um, that is amazing. That is, you don't really hear every day that, you know, there's a 15 year old, you know, in, <laughs> in college. So, yeah. It was, for me, it didn't seem unusual, right? Because I had just finished secondary school, high school in Nigeria. And for me, that was, felt like the next step. My peers were going to college like Morehouse or Howard or Duke. And so for me, like, that was my next step. And it's funny how um, I actually was able to skip two grades. Um, the first one, when I was younger, we lived in the UK. And so we moved back from... Um, England back to Nigeria and because the curriculum is different they didn't know what grade to put me in and one of my friends was in primary five so I was like put me in primary five not primary four and that's how I just jumped over to primary okay. five and then the school I went to I did well on common entrance exams so I skipped primary six and that's how so I show up at my secondary school Alashiri and turns out I'm like the second youngest uh boy in my year i don't think they knew that i didn't tell i didn't publicize <laughs> that fact right but, um but that's probably what set me on this path to like starting at ut at 15 and um you know it was interesting because like i felt like i was academically ready and because i had gone to boarding school in nigeria i felt like i was used to handling myself and being away from my family um but then I had some social constraints, right? So I, you know, if you want to go out at night, go out to the bars, you have to be 21 years old. And I finished college when I was 20. So like, you know, there's some social constraints that come with it, but then there are ways around it by having parties and I had a great social life. Yeah. You know, life, um, but yeah, it was great. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk a little bit about some of that, man. Uh, we were at UT. For me, UT was amazing uh, as far as um, I would not. That was probably one of the best decisions that I made as far as undergrad to go to. And Absolutely. I mean, I struggled. I wasn't as smart as you. <laughs> I was not. Uh, I was I was not making, you know, great grades, but um I had fun. <laughs> yeah. We had a lot of fun. Um, I know we were in ASA together, the African Student Association, <laughs> and we were out there partying sometimes. Absolutely. Yes. Um, you know, you I, and I, you know, just Sixth Street, you know, uh, mm -hmm. all of that. It was just, it was, it was a great time. Uh, you, but what was so amazing about what I, what I, one of the things that I took from ASA was, you know, was just not, you know, the love and the appreciation of the continent of Africa and the, the, a, a lot of bright minds and students and stories coming from Africa, but also just some of the amazing things that a lot of us were doing with that. You know, we had, you know, people <laughs> from, uh, literally all over the continent. And it wasn't just restricted to us either. It was yeah. for people who also wanted to learn uh, more about the culture, more about the continent. Um, we had one of our mutual friends <laughs> who, um, who, you know, was ended up being one of the, maybe a, a vice president or something at some Treasurer, point. I believe. Treasurer, I believe. Treasurer. Yeah, yeah. And... So 
he's a white guy <laughs> and yeah. we all assumed or maybe i assumed <laughs> i know a few other people have just assumed oh he's south african right yeah. he's he's a white south african <laughs> <laughs> and so we were i mean uh, we were cool with him and even regardless of that we still would have been cool with him but years later uh the funny story is <laughs> i ran into him actually in south texas you know where i was working uh mm -hmm. i was a ph i'm a pharmacist and this guy is like the assistant district attorney right <laughs> in this oh, uh in this well. county again doing yeah. great things uh and so i was like yo man like so are you you're south african right <laughs> <laughs> and he was like no i'm from uh is it did he say are is it arkansas or something? like arkansas alabama one of them. alabama one of them <laughs> like, i'm like wait what and it blew yep. me away. i'm like but your last name like is like isn't that germ isn't that like a like a south african <laughs> german name yeah it, it sounds almost like an afrikaans it, name yeah yeah it, it sounded a little bit you know and uh he was like no i'm i'm from uh alabama <laughs> and i was just mind blown you know, but uh, still, we, you know, regardless of that, obviously, we did accept him. And the Falabi, I think you knew <laughs> that he wasn't yeah. South African, but it didn't make a difference, you know. And there were really? so many amazing people that were um, that were part of us. Now, I'll be honest, I didn't pay dues. All right, I was a member, but I, <laughs> <laughs> but it, I was in rice. <laughs> uh, and, hey, I might drop in on a meeting here and there, you know, but I, I didn't I didn't pay no dues. <laughs> but uh no It was uh, a great experience. I for me, like as an officer and like because I work I was the treasurer first of all before I became president. And okay. just being able to take on leadership and organize things, like, you know, it's like a way for us to practice running business in a way. Like right. Kepa she took over Fest Africa. We took her to the main mall for the very first time. We went from having this event that my first year was like 150 people came to Fest Africa. And like when Kepa ran it, it was like a thousand people. I mean, at the main mall and like celebrating African culture. Like, right. we're just like, for me, it was amazing. I mean, I know when I think back, I think that year was present, not to brag, but I remember like we, our <laughs> team was very successful. Like, I think we doubled the number of the double the paid memberships so that's not including you <laughs> but then we tripled the amount of money raised for charity and like i think i think that's really um important yeah um it's like it's whatever we're doing isn't just for us it's it's like right we're a community and we have to serve and you know so we have a good time build relationships yeah. but yeah. Also, like serve our community too and hopefully right. build religion that lasts a lifetime. Like, right. You know, like exactly. And, you know, to where, you know, you can, you know, reconnect with someone in the middle of, you know, uh, <laughs> in the middle of almost nowhere, you know, and yeah. you feel you, you're still able to be like, hey, man, how's it going? And you know what? We're, we're you know, it, it, it's all good. You know, or call up, you know, uh, Falabi 10 years later, 11 years later, plus and it's still all good you know we pick up almost you know like nothing ever happened from where, where we left off you know uh, absolutely that was amazing but you touched on something that i think is a, is 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 key and crucial is it helps you learn leadership right yeah. you took on these roles early on and you it helped you know you learn how to have a team Think about, you know, your social responsibility. Think about how to give back. Think about how to inspire people and things like things like that. And just really be that example and the leader. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Because you use that. I know I, I and and I'm sure you've, you you ended up using that in some other ways. But can you at least talk about it from that perspective, how it helps you? Yeah, I mean, I think. I did it. I got in because I loved ASA and I'm someone who's also, you know, I also like happy to present myself to the meeting if opportunity comes up. Why not? Um, but I got a lot, of, I got a lot out of it. I grew, it was probably one of the best things at UT and it opened many more doors 
than I could have never have imagined. Like I was able, right. that became my platform to which I joined other organizations and met a lot of other really great people who have been really impactful for me. Um, but I think, you know, learning, just stepping up and assuming leadership and taking a position, but you've seen it as service um, and do whatever, you, whatever is in your hand, do it well. I think right. it's just great practice. I look back now, I'm thinking we we're basically entrepreneurs because we had no money and we had to organize all these events right. and create this product, which is like the organization, the meetings, the 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 events we put on the parties the you know programs we were basically entrepreneurs as I look back now and then we think me and Charles will be thinking hey how, how can we raise money so we wrote letters to Oprah she never answered us <laughs> um, <but> like, <laughs> we would like apply look for funding on campus then we started like asking people selling things like it was actually looking back now it was great training for small business entrepreneurship. And right. Sorry to disappoint you. I don't have a thriving small business yet, but I've been able to like. It really helped me when I was interviewing for jobs, particularly. Um, That's awesome. When you can say, "Hey, I and my team, we did this. We created this out of nothing." And right. It shows right. that you can have created, and you have you're able to see things through. You know, and as well, you're still doing well in school, so you can. You know, you can, what, what do you say? You know, walk and chew gum at the same time. At the same time, and right. People, people, you know, I think, particularly for students, like it's, um, it's, it's great training. For me, it was, I look back and I'm very grateful that I had those experiences. And yeah, I think it was one of the best things I, I, I did at UT. It really helped me grow. And it's given me confidence that I can do, um, I could do similar things again or on a bigger scale. So, right. 